Hey guys, welcome back to VBA A to Z. I'm Long Pamai and in this video, we'll create from scratch a small project to extract an attachment from Outlook folders based on multiple criteria. This video will show you how to connect to Outlook using VBA, activate a specific session if there are multiple accounts, navigate to any of the folders within Outlook including the shared mailbox, locate the email based on the various parameters and download the attachment to a folder. We'll also design a simple UI to send or get the uh, parameters. As always, project files and source codes are free for download and use. The only request from you is to support my channel so I can keep sharing all these useful videos. So before we begin, please do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for upcoming videos. So let's start everything from scratch. I'm adding a new workbook, um, blank workbook. And then here we'll design a simple UI. We'll spend about five minutes. Um, so let's call this query maller of Q, something like this. First, we'll have parameters. We can query based on date, greater than date, or from this date to this date, something like this as well, okay? And then if we want to match uh, based on the subject line, and then based on the email body text, if you want to find a specific uh, tracking ID within the email body, that's what I have done in the past. So that is pretty useful. When you're sending out the email, you can put, um, you know, like in the white font, you can put um, like a string within the email body. And then when that is replied, you can track if that email has been replied and so on. So maybe email body tracking or, you know, like finding the text there also will be useful. And coming down here, maybe you can configure which mailbox to look for, you know, like if there are multiple mailbox within the same Outlook, then you can specify which um, mailbox to pull from. And then next will be the folder, folder navigation. So here I have two mailbox just to de demonstrate. These are dummy, you know, like accounts that I've created for this purpose. So here I'll put my at uh, Outlook and then this is, you know, like uh, maybe underscore to Z at Outlook.com. So we'll, you know, like show you demonstrate how to do all this and then Within the, here, we can specify how, you know, like the folders are to be navigated. And then we want to export the attachment to a folder. So export, um, we can say export to. And uh, here we'll add uh, simple information as well, uh, which will be like uh, last executed execution uh, status, something like this. Now I'm going to quickly add uh, like a text box. So instead of using the ActiveX, um, you know, like items or objects, we'll just use um, a very simple way to do this. So here I'm going to start adding um, borders, which will look like ActiveX though. So you can do this in your own way. And then the tool also can be bold and maybe bigger like this. QML. So now here we'll have date. Here we'll have a subject line. Maybe um, let's say that we have to look for flows data. And then here, let's say that we have a tracking ID and you have to search for a certain number like this. And here we can specify which folder we want to pick the data from. So I've created a sample folder here. Within inbox, there's a data folder and then there is flows folder. So based on the rule, the data is going to, the email is going to be routed here. And then from here, we can, uh, for example, pull the attachment to that particular folder. Inbox, data, and then flows. Here, inbox, data, and flows. And where we want to export to, so here, let me just create a new folder. We'll call this attachment, download, something like that.
Okay, so this will be filled by program when it runs later. Now let's quickly create name range for all this so that uh, we can refer from the program. Let me get rid of this column just for a moment. We'll select all this. We'll create the name range based on the you know like all the text in the on the left column. So create from selection and left column. When you click here, you should see the date, the subject. All this has been name range now. Okay. Keep it consistent. Just hiding the rows and columns there. Nothing much. Okay, so our UI, a simple UI is going to look like this. Okay, that's going to be all from the UI design perspective. And now I'm going to go to my Visual Basic Editor. Now before we can start writing the code, we'll have to reference to Microsoft Outlook library. So go and find Microsoft Outlook. Should be somewhere here. So I have a 16.0 uh, object library, so whatever is available for you, you can select the highest um, one, okay, highest version. Now let's insert a module, and uh, before we can write a code, um, I'll quickly introduce you to, you know, like the hierarchy of the object for, our, uh, for Outlook for this purpose. So first is the Outlook application, and then within the application we have um, namespace. And then within the namespace will be the inbox. Okay, those will be the folder. And then we have after that uh, items, items within the um, inbox. And then it will be mail items. Okay, mail items. And then within the mail items, we'll have attachment. Okay, this is how we're going to reach there. So let's start writing the code. We'll call this download attachment. Start to declare all these um, objects. So first will be Outlook application as uh, our Outlook application, and then will be our namespace, and next will be our uh, folder. So oil as uh, and then folder okay then next uh, we have uh, outlook item we'll just say this is object and then we'll have uh, mail items and then last for now we'll have uh, attachment so we'll call this attachment okay now let's start setting all this up so this will be our um, this will be our application and then This will be the setting up the namespace. Um, we'll get the namespace, sorry. And then here it will be our map. And then we'll, okay, so talking about the folder, um, if you only have a single mailbox here, you can assign, um, you can directly get uh, from the namespace, you can get the default folder, okay? That will give you the, the inbox for that. From, from there you can get the inbox. Otherwise, you can also specifically reference to this, uh, you know, like within this session, you can, you know, like get this particular session. Okay. So coming back here. Okay. So for the folder, that folder equal to from this namespace. So if you have only a single mailbox, you can directly go for this like this okay otherwise uh, in this scenario we have two mailbox so I'm gonna set in a different uh, method so I'm gonna get um, a set folders and then within this folder you can specify for example alpomai at outlook 
mailbox.com so which is this or you can specify this mailbox okay or uh, since we already have this created let's get the information from here so this is this is the mailbox so from the admin sheet so we can see the object here as well so the the object name itself is admin so instead of hard coding it I'll just say admin and then with for the range I'll just say mailbox okay now our mailbox is ready so if I print this out in the immediate window control G you get whatever is reference here okay so we're gonna get the mailbox from there and then within this box we want to navigate to we want to navigate to inbox data and folders so from here you can specify um, you can for now let's just hard code it so let's say inbox and then from here we want to go to further down to data and then from here we want to go further down to flows so later on uh, I'll show you how to navigate using this but for now let's go with this so now we're saying this is my mailbox we want we're interested in and then from there we're going to inbox and then we're further referencing it to data and then to flows okay so so far I think this is good now we'll start looping through all the items within this um, within this folder we'll say items okay so now um, we are interested in the mail items only within this folder so we'll just go ahead and say uh, we'll take a condition if outlook item dot class is equal to outlook uh, mail then only we are interested in that okay now um, from here we can uh, set up our email so this mail item let's make this so we'll say if that is the case we'll set mail item is equal to this item so that's how we have set up our email and then from here we'll say um, we can try to print this out dot subject and then maybe we can also try to print out dot um, the body or receive time when it was received and so on all the information about this mail item now you are able to access it okay now before uh, going ahead let me just set this to you know like clear the memory and just in case it gets stuck okay so let's try to run this so within these flows uh, I have all these dummy uh, you know like uh, emails let's try and see how it works F5 type mismatch uh, okay just give me one second okay so let's specify I think type mismatch was because it's trying to pick up the object instead of the you know like the value now one more thing to clear here is when you're navigating further we have to point further from that folder so instead of namespace all this should be the folder so first from the namespace we're assigning a mailbox and then here we're navigating to the folders from that specific folder we're going further to the you know like the inbox and then data and then to the flows let's give it one more try now control G and then let's bring this out So the first mail, I think we should print out uh, the subject. Yep. So these are all the you know like uh, the subject and the time it's received. Okay. So so far the code seems to be working. Okay. Now um, we'll start putting our criteria and then to download the attachment as well okay so from once we have the mailbox set uh the mail item set up we'll from the mail item we'll look through each attachment because there could be more attachment as well right so for now i'm just going to leave this part as it is and then we'll start
Okay, for we'll, we'll look through all this attachment. And then here you can further, you know, like uh, put a validation that if the file name is something, then you can download, for example, if attachment dot uh, file name. So here you can specify the file name as well in this manner. Uh, if the file name is equal to or something like you can use uh, in string function as well just to do like a like match so for example in str in string and then you can specify um, this particular outlook attachment file name and then here you can put uh, if it matches flows data let's say that the file name needs to have a flows data name naming convention if that's when you want to download you can specify the criteria in this fashion as well like this okay now for now we do not need that so i'm gonna just get rid of that so whatever attachment is there we're gonna save that to a folder so attachment.save as file name and then uh, save as file and this where you're gonna specify where you want to um, put the name you can specify the name um, as per your choice now going back to our UI, we want to export it to this particular location, export to. So we'll say admin, and then dot text. This is the name of the folder. And then with the folder, we want to concatenate it with the attachment file name. OK, and then uh, this dot file name. OK, so let's give it a shot and see if it works. now we do not have any condition it's going it's navigating to this folder and then from here it's looping through all the items when the item is outlook email when the type is mail because within the folder there could be other items as well right so if it is uh, the mail type and then it's setting up our email and then from the mail is getting uh, looping through all the attachment and then it's saving all the attachment to the output folder okay so the output folder again, if I validate this, sorry. So it's giving us the path. Okay, so this is where it's gonna strike me. Now I have to get rid of this because there is backslash here at the end. Okay. So now let's try to run once. If I go here to this folder, there is no item. I'm gonna give it a run. Uh, in this flows folder, you can see there are one, two, two of them with the, uh, you know, like uh, attachment and the attachment is one is help my and then one is sheet one. So let's give it a try. So it's complete. And here are two attachments from that particular folder. Okay, so now we'll p further, you know, like um, use our UI to get our parameters. So now um, let's say that from this particular folder, we want to look for item with the subject UI UX demo text, something like this. Okay, not the best example, but get a fair idea. And then within, let's say that within um, the mailbox, actually, I for demo purpose, if I select here at the bottom, I've you know I like put the font color to white, and then there is if I copy this, you'll see there is a text here. Okay, so we'll say that if the, you know like uh, if the mail body has this particular text something like this then only we want to download the attachment from that and let's say that uh, we want to query all the mail items only greater than um, let's say 13 it's yesterday's day and then now we're gonna run on these parameters okay now we'll still leave this as it is first try this out now coming down here we'll, we can put a validation that um, We'll use this receive time. Also, if this receive time is greater than, again, we'll use this date. Only when this is true, we want to go further okay again there are multiple conditions uh parameters that we need to check so now we'll just give it one more try and see if this condition works 
so it has downloaded one of them the date condition is working now we'll see um, the subject is equal to this so we'll check multiple things now and then we'll say n mail item dot subject is equal to subject so if is equal to this value or you can put in string function if the subject contains something like this so here if this subject so let's put it outside here first so in string if this particular in string has a subject uh, has a, the subject has a value something like this if it's true then we want to go further okay we'll cut this of this here so we're saying that if the subject line contains this particular word then we want to go ahead so there are two conditions now if the date is greater than this and then here if the subject contains this and then the email body contains this so let's try this as well so dot body so we'll just replicate this exact example body and then so the email body is this name range this value okay admin and then this value so one more condition okay so if the receive time is greater than the date here and then the subject contains this and then the email body also contains this value that's when we want to loop through and then find the attachment and here if you want to find the file name as well with certain name you can follow this method as well okay so let's give it a try going here the attachment is blank there's no items there so running it again okay so there's no email so the condition was not met or there is something wrong with our code now let's go and find it out here so within this particular email uh, we have the text is fine UI UX and then uh, this particular um, element is there maybe the time when it was sent so let's see when it was sent this email was sent on 14th so this this date condition also should work so let's see the code once more okay so let's try to debug this I'm gonna rerun this code when the subject is matching our you know like requirement I'll just pause it there now I'm gonna try to debug each of these condition so first says the condition is true now let's check this in string is returning us one okay so we need to put um, equal to or greater than something like that and then this returning us this particular value is in this position okay like this okay cool so I'm gonna if it is not equal to zero I think will be will suffice okay so it's downloaded now so condition seems to be working now so let's try to run it one more time stop printing this for now so here here are the files okay um, now if you want to run this code um, you know like from the button we can also assign a button to this you know like uh, simple UI let's put a shape or vector instead of um,
Okay, somewhere here, and then well, let's find this code. So I'll just select the code you want to run from this button, so, and then I'm gonna say download something like this. Now before this, we'll just insert one more in here, we'll bring it down here. Something like this. And now we want to check the start time, end time and all this, so that should be very simple. I'm going to quickly do that. Let's see here dim start time as date dim end, end time and then uh, dim username this can be string and then we want to time taken as date okay so all the date and time will be you know like declared as date now or start time here as soon as it runs we'll just assign a time now and then or end time when everything is finished and then we'll say end time again is now and the time taken Time taken will be um, start time minus the end time, and then now we can say you will just continue with this convention in this tutorial. We'll say that um, status is equal to success. Start time, time taken, and the username. So this will be just the environment username. So this will give us the the username, or if you want the full name of the person who ran dot uh, this should give us the username as well so you can do that as well if you want I'll just put both so that you can use whatever you need okay and the time taken is gonna be here and this time taken can be formatted from here or from here as well and the start time is gonna be here start time time taken time taken is this minus this and then let's format this our minute second format okay so this is how we can put a format um, so I think that should be it now we want to like uh, if there is an error we'll say that um, on error go to we'll talk more about this in our future topic but uh, whenever error happens we want to go to this error x location so here we'll say exit sub and below that we'll just put this okay and then uh, we're gonna specify exactly the same thing here but here we'll say failed okay okay so let's give it a try. So I'm gonna run this. Let's say that we want to navigate to this location. Maybe go to something like that. So if I go here, there's nothing. I'll click on this. So it returns us the information. 
like this okay this third time I think it's okay to leave it like that now if I go to folder there are attachments okay then delete it uh, now I think that's pretty much it let's say that uh, we have um, a dummy mailbox you run it says failed because it's not able to find it but uh, it took zero seconds and then the name of the person who ran it okay so that's a quick validation for our error handlers one last thing we can do here is based on this we can dynamically navigate to these folders without having to specify this navigation so if you want to do that if you are okay without it also it's okay now I'm gonna quickly show you that part we're just gonna use a quick uh, split function to you know like split all this text into different tags and then we'll use to navigate that dynamically okay let me first declare this new variable so first will be the this this text whatever is in this folder navigation let's call this navigation as a uh, string and then um, let's call this as folders again this can be string or variant and then uh, we'll loop through the text after splitting it call this folder index as long okay so now this part instead of looping through each of this we're gonna go based on this whatever is there okay so now when you download it if you want to be in this specific format you can enable that back okay so now we have that we'll say navigation this folder value will be coming from admin and then we'll say within this particular cell or name range and then now we're gonna split this text okay then here we'll just uh, start to loop uh, this is the text and then uh, we have to assign the folders the folders we'll just this is an array right so let's we'll say here will be the split and then here we'll put in this folder this text basically and then here we put the delimiter so our delimiter is this semicolon for now and then now we'll loop for this index equal to now L bound will give us a starting point to U bound like this and then now from here we can just get the folders which will be the index sorry now instead of using this static values we can navigate it in this fashion okay so now let's give it a try again now when we run this we can um, print this value as well and see if it works so now when we run it we're expecting to see inbox data and flows in a different you know like lines okay let's give it a run so here are the outputs so it seems to be working fine we'll just let it go and then it's successfully finished so if you go to the folder now you'll see the files have been downloaded okay so that's the idea that i'm trying to just uh, give it to you today you can play more around this and then obviously you can uh, make amendments um, make changes to the code and tune this in the way you want again all these items whenever you put in you know like it will in give you all these um, procedure uh, methods and you know like uh, properties that you can so guys that's all I have for you in this video if you have any questions please feel free to comment below I'll try to come back to you as soon as possible and um, if you found the video informative please do not forget to leave a like and a comment and subscribe to our channel for upcoming videos.